Hey, what's up guys? I got some tech news for you guys today. The first thing to talk about is 4K, which is still pretty new to a lot of people, and some people still don't quite know what it is. And if you don't know what it is, it is double the width and the height of 1080p. So it's like four screens into one of 1080p. So it's going to be great for four-way co-op games in the future. So that way when it's four-way split screen, it'll be as if everybody's on their own 1080p screen, which is going to be really great. But one of the limitations of a lot of 4K TVs right now is that most of them can only give you up to 30 hertz refresh rate, which the average right now is 60 hertz or higher. And the reason has to do with the limitation of HDMI. Now some 4K TVs right now can give you 60 hertz, but that's why it's using two HDMI cables. Now, it looks like HDMI 2.0 is not very long from coming out, and it has been announced, and it will be able to give you 4K at 60Hz with a single cable, so it's going to be really, really great. And as far as audio, it's going to be able to give you up to 32 channels of audio, so this way multiple people could be using the screen at the same time, possibly listening to different things, and maybe watching different things at the same time, possibly using some of the 3D technology like Sony did, so then that way when people are playing video games co-op, they don't have to go split screen. Instead, when one person's wearing glasses, he sees his player taking up the full screen, and the other guy does the same thing, and he sees his player taking up the full screen. So it will be as if there's two TVs and one. So this will be really great to make TVs to where multiple people could be using it at the same time. Now, one of the problems right now with 4K as far as content and stuff is that there's not very much movies or anything like out there right now, and there's not very many cameras, but Sony has announced that they will be releasing a 4K camcorder that will be arriving at market at $6,500, which may seem like a lot, but when you consider how many good cameras cost around $2,000 or at least close to it, it's a really good price considering it's four times the resolution. And it's not just, you know, a really cheap camera. It has really great buttons. It has all the functionalities that someone would want. All the things that you could do with most cameras nowadays. It does have an option for an external microphone. It has all the bells and whistles that a lot of people love to see in really good quality high-end cameras. But one of the things that really surprised me about this camera is the fact that it's going to be recording at 4K 60fps. Now, when it comes to 60fps and those kind of specs, be careful because some 4K TVs right now out there say something about 120Hz. But what they don't tell you, and this is why you need to pay careful to the way they work things, is that it can do 120 hertz at 1080p when you lower it from 4k to 1080p so you got to be careful on those specs and in this case it actually does do 4k at 60 fps which is really great considering that 4k is still very very new and there's still a lot of 1080p cameras that go from 24 to 30 fps some of them can do 60 fps you know but there's still some of those 30 you know 24 fps cameras and considering how new 4k is and how this is one of the first cameras for 4k it's really really great to see that it's going to be at 60 fps now one of the things you need to know is that you need to have a lot of hard drive space because it will have a high bitrate of 600 megabytes per second which will be roughly 36 gigabytes per minute so you're going to need a lot of space and they will be using a different type of memory card which i will put a link in the description below so you can see what it is but it's going to be much faster than just regular sd cards and have a much higher transfer rate now as far as moving the files and that kind of stuff we don't exactly know what kind of connection they're going to be using whether it's going to be usb 2.0 or 3.0 we can say that it's very likely going to be usb 3.0 but it's still good to pay close attention and as far as the bit rate you actually can lower it from 600 to 233 or 230 or 150 so you will be able to lower in case you're running out of space or something or if you don't care too much about that spec or anything like that and this and since it does 60 fps at 4k one thing that wonders me is what if you lower it to 1080p can you record at 1080p and if so will it be recording at 120 180 240 fps or anything like that that would be really great to know but we're still going to pay very close attention to this camera just to make sure you know it does use me 3.0 and there's nothing really holding people back now when it comes to tech news on this channel, I do talk about SSDs quite a bit. Now what I'm going to be telling you guys is something that's not exactly official, but something that a company is just testing on and really trying to see what people think about it. And that is Intel. They're really trying to get out there the idea that they might be able to make some SSDs that have the option to overclock them, which is just really, really crazy. And it seems like some people actually like the idea, but I would say for most people, keep in mind the SSD is what very likely most of your personal data is on what your main files and all your important files and your operating system that keeps your computer working especially if this is your main drive so keep that in mind and if you overclock it too much it's not like a cpu where you could just change the settings back or change it to default or just reset the bios settings or anything like that and have everything working fine again if you overclock it too much you will lose all of your data you will but one thing that's actually been heard is that a lot of people really do like this idea that will have some you know NASs or have some you know ray 10 setups so this way even if they you know 
know, one of them dies, you know, from overclock too much, at least that way the data that was on it will be shared on one or multiple other drives, and that way all they have to do is take it out the dead drive, slap a new one in, and then it will put the data back on it. And this way they can have really, really great performance, because usually these kind of drives, and when they have these kind of setups, depending on what they're doing, those drives might be dying quite frequently anyway, so you might as well get the best performance out of it. Now, the great thing about this is that even if it doesn't happen or anything like that, the thing is, is that it will be benefiting both types of people, whether it's average consumer or someone that's, you know, really high end or anything like that. And the reason is because this way they will have much stronger controllers on them and they will be able to handle under high loads and be able to just be able to last longer and be much more durable overall. So this will be very beneficial to both people. Now, as far as the actual improvements we'll be seeing, we'll be seeing 30% less power consumption and 25% performance increase, so almost an even 30-30. And as far as the actual DIMMs themselves, you'll be able to get a 32 gigabyte single DIMM, which is just really crazy, especially when you get into those motherboards that have eight RAM slots. So that's pretty much it for today, guys, and tell me guys what you think. Are you actually happy to see that both on the consumer and production side of things, a 4K, things are getting better? And as far as SSDs, do you even like the idea of overclocking? Do you think it's just too much? Do you like the idea? Do you think it's perfect for people that have RAID setups? And do you think it's going to be beneficial in the long run for both types of people? And what about DDR4? Are you happy with all these enhancements? Where are you hoping things would be much better? And are you actually looking to get a DDR4 motherboard? Or are you just going to wait for the prices to go down on DDR3 RAM? Let me guys know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks again guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.